Hi, my name is Oliver and in this video I'll teach you how to animate burning fire in After Effects. So this is quite a simple style, a very simplistic way of doing this. And therefore you can see I've only sort of illustrated the locks here, some shadow underneath, and then we just have a color palette up here at the top. Because it's actually easier to draw out the fire in After Effects and animate it afterwards. It's just quicker that way. Now you can draw some references for these sort of flames. So you can create the references in Illustrator if you'd like. So you can see where you'd sort of uh, be placing the flames. If you want to support the channel, you can go down in the description and download the project file. That way you can take a deeper look at my keyframing, or you can use my illustration to create this animation of your own. So to get started, we'll actually go up to the top here and select the pen tool, because that way we can draw out the sort of first triangular path. So we simply just click, hold down shift, go to the sort of the other side and that way you'll make a straight line. Then we have to go up to the top, approximately in the center, and we see we have this triangular shape. Now you can adjust this for a bit until you get a result that you like, but really this is going to change so much that it doesn't really matter. So now that we have this sort of triangular shape, we just hide everything else because we're only going to work with this for now. And the thing we're going to do is that we'll go to Window, then we'll go all the way down and we'll find this option called Create Nulls from Paths. So we click that and we get this menu. Now you have a few options. The first is that the points follow the nulls. And that essentially means that if we open this up, you can see that we have this path, we have three points. And if we click this, there will be created three nulls and then you can move the nulls around and that will sort of control the path. The nulls follow points is the opposite, but we'll just click on the first option here. And you have to make sure that you have selected the actual path before doing this. So click, you can see we get these three nulls. Now if I take one of these nulls and move them around, you can see that the path is getting adjusted. Now we can just close down this menu and we're actually only going to work with one of the nulls and that's the top one. So that's the one in the, in the top corner because we want the bottom to be still and we only want this corner to be moving. So we can select that top null, we can press P as in position. I'm going to right click and separate the dimensions because that way we can animate the X position and the Y position separately. Now we're going to use some wiggle expressions for this and essentially the reason why we have split this up is because we wanted to wiggle more up and down in its position rather than from side to side. So we'll just start with the X position, we'll alt option click the stopwatch and we get this expression tab. So we just delete the text here and we essentially just want a simple wiggle expression. So type in wiggle and we have these parentheses and a wiggle essentially just moves it at random. So this is the X position and therefore it will move it horizontally uh, at random. It will move at a certain frequency or speed that we tell it to, so we can tell it how fast to move. We can also tell the amount, so how, how much it should essentially move. So for the speed, we want this to be quite high, um, because if it's very low, it wouldn't really look like fire. Now this is a very simplified version of fire, but we can go for a speed of something like four. Then we type in comma, because the first sort of number here, or the first variable, is the speed. And the next one is the value. So how much do we want it to move? And we don't want it to move as much as the Y position, but we can go for something around 40, which should be fine. And when we click out of this, you can see it already starts to move here. If we play it back, you can essentially see it's just moving back and forth. So this is just sort of like a, a CC slant effect. But then we can copy this expression, all the option click the Y position and paste it again. And here we just want to maybe go for something like 140 in the value and then click out. And now if we play this back, you can see that it moves a lot more in the Y position, which is what we want. And because we're sort of controlling the path with these nulls, it's very easy to only move one point. And this is essentially the best way to do this, because if we were to animate the scale, you wouldn't really get that movement from side to side. And, and this just works perfectly. So now that we have done this, we can essentially take these four layers, so the triangle and the three controllers, we can right click, we can pre-compose, and we just call this the flame. And now we can turn on the other layers again, and we can sort of position this flame. So let's say we want it right around here. And now we can go up to the pan behind tool, click and drag the anchor point to the bottom of the flame here. 
And now we basically want to just duplicate this and, and place it a bunch of times. So we can Command or Control D to duplicate. Then we can drag it somewhere else. So maybe we want a flame over here. Press S as in scale. And we can essentially just scale this however we'd like. And then we can pick a color up here. So we'll go to the effects and presets, search for the fill, and drag that onto the composition. That way we can pick another color. So let's say we want this color. And it's really just to sort of distinguish the flames from each other. And we can duplicate this again. We can drag it all the way over here. So maybe we want this to be a bit taller. So right around here. And again, we can select another color. So this could perhaps be this orange color. And we duplicate again. And essentially, you just want to repeat this process until you get as many flames as you'd like. And of course, at the end, we can go in and sort of adjust everything. You can see maybe we want to offset these a bit to the side. So there's actually space for this one. And we can adjust the scaling and place it down here. And now we just want to select another color. So maybe something a bit more yellow. Duplicate that. And, and essentially just want to keep repeating this process. And at the start of this, you could have sort of made a reference for this. So you could sort of say, oh, I, I wanted to look approximately like this and, and just go from there. But really right now I'm just approximating everything and, and it, it sort of works fine. You just have to make sure that they're not overlapping on some in some weird way. So you see some, just like a little bit of a flame. But really, uh, this is all up to, to personal taste, personal preference. And you just have to make sure that you're selecting different colors. Of course, you can push these so some of them are above others. And as you can see, that looks like flames. And if we just close all of these down, we can select all of them and just move them to a point where we like. So right around here. And this should work fine. Now, if we play this back, you can see it looks rather odd. And that's because every single flame is moving the exact same way. Now, in real life, of course, these would be offset. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So you can see we have this composition of four seconds. And we can essentially just start to drag some of these back here. And really just make sure that none of them are aligning here at the end. Um, so just sort of try and drag them like this. And make sure to end the composition before uh, they start to sort of disappear here. So we just press N to trim the work area. And that way you can see that all of the flames are moving differently. And it's a, a lot more sort of natural and, and random. You know, every single flame is essentially moving in the same pattern. But because you're offsetting them, you, you won't really notice that. And also that gives a great effect because it just seems like the wind is going in the sort of same direction. You can see, oh, they're moving a bit that way and a bit that way, just a, a bit offset. So this is great and we can just turn off the colors. And now because we have this light source, these flames, this shadow would also be moving. Now this shadow is essentially just a copy of, of the Lux and I've just applied a fill to a sort of dark blue color. And what we're going to do is just press S as in scale and make sure the anchor point is set in the center. Do that by selecting the pad behind tool. We'll just all the option click the scale and we'll write in wiggle. And here we'll go for sort of the same speed as the flames, so four. And we can go for a value of sort of like 10. And you have to imagine that when you have a light source such as flames that are constantly moving, that way the shadow will also be moving with the flames. So we can try and play this back. And as you can see, the shadow is just moving a bit, is sort of wiggling in that scale, and it just looks great with these sort of flames. So now as a final touch, you could say, we just want to add a, a bit of sparks from the flames and, and a bit of smoke. And that's done if, in sort of the same way, just, uh, just with a, a few different settings. So we'll start out with the sparks, and we want the sparks to be this sort of orange color. So we want them to appear roughly in, in sort of the center of the flame, so right around here. Go to Layer, New, Solid. And we'll just sort of select this orange color, and we can just call this the Sparks. And you can see right here, it's sort of in the middle of the flames. But we'll just go to Effects and Presets, and we'll search for Particle. And we'll select the Particle Systems, drag that onto the Solid. 
And you can see right now that sort of sparks, but not the sparks we we're really looking for. Now, the first thing we're actually going to do is select that solid, press R as in rotation, and we just want to rotate it 180 degrees, because that way we can use gravity in the opposite direction and make these sparks go upwards, so sort of float up into the sky. Now we'll go to producer, select the position, so we want them to spawn from right around here. Then we go into the physics, and now you can see that we sort of try and play the spec, and you can see they're moving way too quickly, and there are too many of them. So we can go ahead here, and if we adjust the velocity, you can see that's sort of how wide they'll go. And then the resistance will up that to quite a bit, so they don't go as fast. You can see if we play it back, they sort of go up here. And then, of course, we want to lower the birth rate. We'll just set it to maybe 0.04. Now we'll go into the particle, change the type to motion polygon. So that's sort of a triangle. And we just want to increase the birth size quite a bit and set the death size to zero. And maybe increase the birth size even more and set the max opacity to 100. So right now you can see some of the triangles start to appear. So we can try and play it back. And you can essentially just see these sort of sparks. You can always go in and adjust the position or you can adjust the longevity so how long they'll last maybe we wanted them to last just a bit more so you can see them going up for for a bit longer but this is essentially just something you want to mess around with and i'm quite happy with this sort of result we'll select the solid press command and control d to duplicate it go to layer solid settings and here we just want sort of a smoke color uh, sort of in the warm area right around here, make sure it stands out from the background as well. Press OK and press New. And we'll just put this below every single flame. We'll go into the particle and we will select the lens convex here. And that's essentially these sort of circles. And maybe we can change the birth size, so lower it a tiny bit. And go into the physics, change the velocity so they aren't spread out as much. And we can also set the variation a bit up. And at the very end, we can lower the max opacity so they are sort of, sort of fading into each other. Here you can see we want a bit more particles, so we'll go into the birth rate. So we can maybe set it to 0 0.09, something like that. Just mess a bit around with the, with the overall settings. And maybe we also want just a tiny bit more resistance on this. And we can just play it back. And as you can see, it all just mixes really well together. And you get a great result with the fire, shadow, sparks and the smoke at the very end. Now if you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like, post a comment down below and tell me if you have any questions for the video. Or if you have any suggestions for future tutorials. If you create anything from this, make sure to share it with me on Instagram at Randolph. And you can also subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications to get notified when I upload future videos. That's all for now, till next time.